being an entrepreneur is the hardest thing that you can ever do in the business world. When you're an entrepreneur though, it's just, it's wide open. So you get to make that choice. And as, as exciting as that is, that's also daunting. Hey everyone, this is Nazar Akil from Max Pro. Hi, I'm Linda. And I'm Paul. And we're Love and Pebbles. Hi, this is Lopa Vandermersch from Rasa. Oh, you're listening to, and you're listening. And you are listening to, to the e Show. Show. Welcome to the Ecom Show, presented by Blue Tusker, the number one place to hear the inside scoop from other e-commerce experts, where they share their secrets on how they scaled their business and are now living the dream. Now, here is your host, Andrew Mass. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Ecom Show. I'm your host, Andrew Mapp, and today I'm here with Mike Sewell of Step and Pull. Mike, how you doing today? You ready for a good show? I am. Thanks for having me on. Not a problem. Super excited to have you on the show. Obviously, we love having people that have been on Shark Tank before because it's always a very interesting story. But the one thing I'm looking forward to discussing with you is we don't get too many B2B products that we get to chat about. So super excited to kind of get into that. But let's let's kick this off. I'd love to give you a minute here and kind of tell everyone a little bit about your background, about Step and Pull, and we'll start from there, okay? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, my name's Mike Sewell. Uh, lived, I've lived in Missouri most of my life, and I worked for a large wireless company for about 30 years. And um, the idea for Step and Pull came about while I was working at the wireless company. Part of my responsibility was taking care of the building there, the facilities, and um, I had a couple buddies that I worked with there. And you know, as I took care of the the office and noticed in the restrooms that a lot of people would use a paper towel to open the door to exit and and uh, sometimes show those paper towels on the floor, which made a mess and kind of irritated me. But, um, but you know, thought, hey, there has to be a better way to solve this this whole issue of people avoiding, um, you know, touching the the handle. And mm -hmm. uh, so I just I went to my my two friends that I worked with and said, hey, I've got this idea. Why don't we try to figure out a way to open the door with your foot? And uh, kind of kind of went from there. So it's it's one of those things where it's like wow why did no one think of this before <laughs> um right. like it, it it is very love the idea love the concept behind it and you came out with this i believe it was before covid correct yeah yeah that's correct yeah we started so my two business partners ron eli and kelly coddington so us three we make up krm innovations incorporated which which our main product is step and pull but yeah we invented it in 2007 and actually, wow. I had the original idea of opening the door with the foot. You know, I brought that to our little group. But then Kelly is the one that really came up with the the idea of stepping down and pulling the door open. We were trying it multiple different ways, and ultimately uh, landed on um, on what you you see today as our product, and, and that is step down and pull. It just it made the most uh, after after we designed it, it made the most sense and worked the best. So that's what we yeah. went with. So what, how were sales prior to COVID and then how were they reflected during that time? Because this obviously is a great product for what, you know, 2020 and on now. So was it just kind of like semi-decent and then just skyrocketed in 2020? Yeah, you know, uh, it, it was a side business. It really was and started off slow. I think the first year and, and we invented Step and Pull in 2007, but really started selling in 2008. And I think the first year we sold 750 units, which isn't too bad for, uh, I mean, as a brand new concept, if you think about it, I mean, yeah. we've opened doors uh, with a handle forever. I think since doors were invented, they, I don't, I don't think there's ever time in history people use their foot to open the door. So a new concept, a new, um, paradigm shift that we had to try to break or, or make happen. So, um, you know, we just, we started in, in 2008 and then uh, year over year for the next four or five years, we sold probably 12 or 1300 units a year. And then we started to, you know, we hung in there though, because it was paying for itself. And uh, we, we would get an article here and there and, and uh, we were on a couple different uh, TV programs to, to talk about it. So, you know, we were excited. Sales just weren't taking off. And then, um, I don't know, in like 2013 to 20. 19, we saw this continual just increase year over year, anywhere from 20 or 30 percent year over year to 95 percent year over year. So we finished out uh, uh, 
2019. And I think, oh, what did we, we'd sold, I think 13,000 units that year, I think is what wow. we sold. So, you know, it, it went from 750 the first year to, you know, what, 13 years later, 12 years later to around 13,000 units in a year. So pretty good, you know, just took a yeah. long time to get there. And how, and you said that was in 2019? 2019, yeah. So how did you end up doing once kind of COVID kicked in and everyone started looking for new options? Well, yeah, that was crazy because, you know, it started off 2020 for all of us, uh, probably start out like any other year, right? And uh, New Year's resolutions and all that stuff. And who knew COVID (laughs) was on the way. And uh, we noticed an uptick in traffic the end of February a nice ball. And we're like, Oh my goodness, you know, because we, we'd been around when the H1N1 virus had, had been here and mm-hmm. we saw that and that was nothing like COVID of course, but you know, we expected with COVID there would be an increase in sales. And so we saw that nice bump at the end of February and like, wow, this is great. You know, uh, not because we have COVID let me be clear, but because we have a product <laughs> to help with it and it, and it definitely helped the sales. And so, but then the, the, uh, the first week in March, uh, it just, it was insane. It just, uh, we were seeing 50 to 70, uh, times increase in sales and that's not percent that's times. So 50 to 70 times in sales. I think I I honestly, I don't know the exact number, how many we sold. That's, that's probably bad of me. I should, I should know that off the top of my head in (laughs) 2020, what we sold. Um, you know, I think three or 400,000 units. Um, I'd say at least if not more. So. Yeah. So <clears throat> B2B product, not as easy to market as it would be for your traditional, you know, B2C focused. How is it you were able to, obviously prior to COVID when people are actively searching for this, how is it you were able to educate the market and start to find these customers that started purchasing your product? Yeah, that, it, as you can imagine, there's a lot to unpack over a 12 year period for all that. But you know, yeah. we, because we're a low budget business, we started out, uh, I think I built or we built the first two or three websites we had. They were, they were horrible looking back <laughs> the, the brand. We had a different brand up until a brand logo up until, um, 2015. And then the, we have the current logo that you see now with the, it's like with the foot there. Um, but, uh, we, about, oh, it was 2016, we brought on an intern, his name's Nick Simmons, and he went to MSU there in Springfield, and we brought him on to, to focus on our social media. And he just gave us a real presence online through the years, kept us engaged. Um, we didn't do a lot of ad campaigns on Amazon. In fact, we weren't on Amazon until probably 2017 or 20, 2016, 2017, something like that. Um, but, but, you know, he just he, he gave us a presence online. And so that's one aspect. And the other that we, because we don't have a a marketing team, we don't have a sales team that makes calls to businesses. We've tried, we've tried with different people. We've tried it internally. It's it's been pretty tough with this product because it is B2B, but also Mm -hmm. because it is, it's just different. It doesn't really fit in the traditional, you know, it's not like trying to sell door handles or hinges or things that people already know about. Um, so really, I, we attribute most of our growth between our online presence, which was very important, just the organic um, effect of having the step and pulls in out there to be used. You know, oftentimes, you know, somebody would go in somewhere, they would see this thing on the door, maybe the first time they didn't know what it was and they didn't know how it worked. They didn't try it. But then the next time they try it, like, well, this is pretty cool. And they try it a few times and then they go back and tell their uh, the people they work with or they go to their restaurants and say, Hey, why don't you put one of these things on the door? And so that word of mouth was, I, I think was, was really the most important part of our growth. And so yeah. there, there were obviously a lot of people that knew about step and pull when, when COVID hit in 2020, but they had not been convinced yet that they needed it for whatever reason. But COVID um, was a very good reason for them to, to purchase, to try to help mitigate the spread. Yeah. And are all your sales online or do you have any kind of retail presence? And if not, are you going to attempt that route one day? Uh, We're not on shelves anywhere that I'm aware of. Um, Every most, most all of our sales are online. We sell it. There's been a shift through the years 
a little bit. We used to do a, about 50% between our website and Amazon, uh, probably 60%. And then 30 or 40% was direct either, um, you know, through distributors or direct to the customer mm. who would order with a purchase order or whatever. Um, that shifted a little bit more actually Amazon heavy now. And I, I'd be curious to, to know if that's, that's got to be a trend in the industry because I think we, I'll say we're all guilty of it. I don't know if that's right. Guilty is probably not the right word, but most all of us are Amazon shoppers and it's so easy just to go to Amazon and your information's already there. It's click, click, you're done. I rarely anymore ever go to a manufacturer's website to buy something. And I think we're seeing that with Step and Pull as well, where we don't, we don't see as many sales on our website anymore. They're almost all through Amazon yeah. and uh, it's a conversation for another time, but uh, <laughs> yeah, that that's the mix. So we don't have retail presence as far as on the shelf, but we sell through some pretty big distributors. So Staples, uh, you can purchase through their website, Lowe's, Home Depot, Menards, um, Granger. We sell through to Granger. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we're, we're very blessed to have a big distribution channel. I think we have probably 240 or 250 distributors that we work with, maybe close to 300. Yeah. That order from us, either a little or a lot. So. And are you, with the increase in Amazon and it's starting to cater to that direction, are you seeing more and more consumers purchasing it for their household or is it, do you think it's still businesses that are all purchasing this through uh, Amazon? It's uh, it's businesses because, you know, Step and Pull is, it's not designed for a home door. It's not designed yeah. for a door with a latch. It's really for a door that's latchless. Um, rather that's, a, you know, restroom doors, of course, initially, that's why we we invented step and pull, but also uh, patio doors at a restaurant, you know, if a server's hands are full and they, you know, they want to go through that patio door, step and pull is pretty handy on those doors, clean room environments, even the front door, like a UPS store, FedEx store, mm -hmm. and even some restaurants, uh, you know, like McDonald's, I don't know if I can name drop, but McDonald's purchased corporate a lot from us in 2020. And they put them on a lot of their front entrance doors of their restaurants just in general to, to allow people to go into the establishment without touching the handle that, yeah. that everyone else had touched on their way in. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> over the past, geez, over, I would say past for like four or five years, there's been a massive shift obviously over to the Amazon side. A lot of people are starting to cater their websites to the Amazon. In fact, <clears throat> as of this recording, it was earlier, I think it was Monday that Amazon announced that they're adding a buy on prime like button that you can add to your website. So it goes directly to Amazon. So they're obviously doing everything they can to compete with the Shopify's of the world and all that fun stuff. So to see, you know, that shift happening on your end, even as a B2B uh, seller, it does not shock me. It's, it's makes sense. Amazon is, is definitely, they're not going anywhere anytime soon. Let's say that. <laughs> well, and they even will now they have a program similar to what you're, you're talking about where, you, you know, you provide a link back to your page and they will pay you a commission back. So in other yeah. words, we've even added a link at the top of our own site because we figure, well, if they're an Amazon, you know, buyer, they're going to buy on Amazon anyway. So why not just give them an easy path back to the product on the Amazon page? And then we get a commission back on that sale. So it's a, that, you know, you just can't hardly be online at least from my perspective these days without having some presence on Amazon, you know, as yeah, far as agree. sales go. Yeah. That's the, uh, the Amazon affiliate program. Cause about two, I think it was about two or three years ago, sellers were doing it all the time, but Amazon would actually suspend accounts because they didn't want people essentially double dipping. And then they changed it to allow for am for sellers to bring traffic to Amazon. Cause they realized like, why wouldn't we let people do this? And so obviously that's, that's starting to be what's happening there. Um, so with, you know, with your product, the one thing I, I know about is it's very, it's one of those things like you buy it once, you don't need to buy it again. There's no recurring purchasing or anything like that. So how are you, obviously it's mostly word of mouth, but are you catering a lot of your marketing to businesses with like franchises or just growing businesses since the smaller ones, they're probably only going to purchase a handful and that'll be it. Well, yeah, you're right. So it's a finite uh, there's only, there are so many doors currently. I mean, there's always new doors being added, but you're right. It's not yeah. like they come back in a year or a month or whatever and buy another one. Um, we're not too, dis we're not too specific on the industry types necessarily because it is such a broad spread application in any business, any brick and mortar that has 
a restroom door that is a pull door, they have a patio door, they maybe they want to put it on their entrance door, or maybe they have a badge reader on a door where they swipe it with a badge and electronic lock, and then they could use a step and pull for whatever reason. So that's pretty universal. Um, you know, so we haven't really, really targeted to specific uh, industries. Uh, the, you know, because the, the ad campaigns that we do now, or we do Google and we do uh, on Amazon as well, those are our two main ad campaigns. The, the thing that continues to encourage us you know, as, as many as we've sold, um, well over half a million total, there are still so many doors out there that do not have them yet. Yeah. And we continually get sales and we continually win over uh, businesses. So uh, there's, we feel like a, still so much opportunity in the marketplace that, that you know, because I, I can walk around any, any city and, you know, maybe 1% or 2% of the doors that could use them have a step and pull. So, I mean, it's yeah. just tremendous opportunity still, and, it, and it's proven, you know, we've gone from a, our goal was always to go from a gadget to a legitimate piece of commercial door hardware, because early on be like, well, that's a gadget, you know, that's gimmicky, but I think we're well past that now, which is a good thing. Yeah. It's almost, I mean, to me, I, I don't even know why a restaurant wouldn't want it. It it seems so straightforward. You get so many people, especially now after COVID that are a little bit more careful around things that they're just touching all the time. Right. Um, how do you, how do you gauge with, uh, competition? I, I, I know you have a patent on the product. Like it's, you know, the way it's shaped, is it, is your patent on the functionality of the product or is it a design patent? Like, how are you keeping competition from knocking you off or are you? Well, yeah, that's a, that's a great point. We have a utility patent. It's not a design patent, but you know, and I'm not sharing any company secrets here. Anybody that's designed, <laughs> anybody that has worked with patents or any IP, um, knows that it's very difficult to protect your patent. And mm -hmm. we had very few competitors, really no real competitors that had a foot operated solution prior to 2020. But by midsummer 2020, it was like fireflies. It was just yeah. ridiculous how many knockoffs had come into the market. And we just, you know, it was just really hard to try to, to do much with that. Um, I think the good news for us is that we were here long before COVID and um, the the rush that came with that, and we're going to be here long after, and we have a high-quality product that is made from extruded aluminum. A lot of the, as you'd imagine, the people who jumped in the water at that time tried to make the cheapest product they could, which I understand yeah. that's business, but most all of the competitors created designs that were made out of stamped metal. Some, some were very flimsy, some were not bad, but um, not, none were as good, in my opinion, as, as the step and pull we make out of extruded aluminum. It's a high quality piece made to last really the life of the door. And so um, we see now through uh, just on Amazon in general and, and the cost for our ad campaigns, the cost per click has dropped, which is an indicator that a lot of, you know, it got really crazy in 2020. We were having to pay a lot just to advertise on our own name which yeah. that's a whole nother thing. I just, it, it's amazing to me that, that legally companies can use your trademark name in their ad campaign to draw people in to buy their product. That's more damaging than them just putting your name on their listing because that's how they drive all the traffic to their product. But anyway, so we're seeing fewer <laughs> uh, competitors on Amazon in general. Um, as time goes on, I think they, they realize that, you know, um, it, it, it just when it got really expensive for them too to, to advertise because we were hanging right in there. We were, we were yeah. not going to back off. We were going to go ahead and pay what we needed to pay at the time to, to stay relevant. So, um, so I think through attrition at this point, we saw a rise and we're seeing a bit of a fall now. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's good. <clears throat> it's unfortunately part of the game. <laughs> um, it is. so how do you, how are you expanding the product line? Are you like, how are you going to keep the business growing? outside of just obviously consistently selling the product. Yeah, we, um, of course, step and pull, I think will always be our flagship product. We're looking mm -hmm. at a couple different things. We've got one other product on Amazon right now that we're, uh, we're trying to figure out our, our path with that, but it's, um, uh, you can go out and look for it. It's called toe in. It's, it's just a, it's a piece of, uh, acrylic that goes on the backside of it, like a kitchen cabinet door. 
and hangs down a little bit, just far enough to get your toe underneath it. And huh. the benefit to that is um, like if you have a trash bin door and if you ever cook in the kitchen and you got guacamole or avocados all over your hands, you know, and you, or hamburger grease or whatever, you're trying to pull that trash bin door open. It's kind of nice to be able to pull it open with your foot and throw the stuff in the, in the trash bin if you have that in your kitchen. But we can see it also in commercial applications um, because it, it is a little easier to pop a door open, especially a lower cabinet, if you use your toe to pop it open. And then, you know, if you got a ream of, like at the office, you got reams of paper you want to put in there. Or, wow, I'm old school paper. Who uses paper anymore? But, uh, <laughs> you know, pop that door open because people will always find that path, the easiest path to do anything. I don't care what it is. And um, it, it, they really do work pretty well. So uh, that's a product we have. We're also looking at maybe instead of trying to invent something, uh, because the door closer is so critical on with a step and pull application, you know, it, people are always like, well, what if the door is too heavy? Well, that's the first thing, you know, it's not the weight of the door. It doesn't matter how heavy the door is. The It's about the door closer resistance. That's what you feel is weight when you pull on a door. And yeah. ADA has a requirement of five pounds or less for interior doors of resistance. And if doors are set to that, then uh, that's great. Step and pull will work work great on those doors. It'll even work if the door's tighter than that, but that's optimal. So my point with that is we we're looking to find a, a door closer manufacturer that we can endorse or resell their product as a, a great solution with the step and pull because some door closers can be adjusted and some can't. Mm -hmm. Older ones can't because they can be adjusted, but what needs to be adjusted, there's a spring that can be set. I think it's like one to five is the rating in the industry but you adjust that string, that spring tension and not all door closers allow you to do that. So yeah, we've, you know, we've got some other products that we're, we're looking at as well inventing, but uh, we're always talking about different opportunities to try nice. to keep it going to your point. And have you done anything, obviously since Amazon makes it so easy, have you done anything to start going outside of selling in the States? Have you used any of that to go international at all? Oh, outside of the States. Oh yeah. We, mm -hmm. We have relationships uh, in, in multiple countries. They, you know, to be fair, they've not had the success we've had in the U.S., but no. uh, we have uh, relationships uh, with uh, people in Australia and the U.K. and South Africa and Mexico and Japan and Hong Kong. Um, you know, we've connected with some different people who, who distribute for us. So uh, we even we had listed some step and pulls in Japan. We haven't had a lot of success with those so far, but on Amazon, we had those on Amazon in Japan. Um, but uh, yeah, to answer your question, we're in, in Canada as well. How can I forget Canada? We got a great partnership with uh, a company up in Canada who actually manufactures step and pulls for us, keeps inventory up there and does order fulfillment right out of Canada to customers. In fact, we have a, a Canadian website, a .ca that people go to in Canada and then they order and it's all all self-contained in Canada, Canada made. So that's pretty cool. Nice. So the uh, obvious question I have, you're on Shark Tank. You did that whole process. What made you decide to go on the show? And then what was that whole experience like for you guys? Um, so Shark Tank has a few different ways they, they get products on the show. And one of those is they have people who do research and reach out to companies. And we happen to be one of the companies they reached out to. It doesn't mean we were a shoe in. We had to go through the whole process yeah. anyway that they have, which I can't go in. There's a lot of confidentiality I can't share with you, but, um, but we, they approached us and just to be honest, and my wife hit me when I said this, I, I said, I don't know if I want to be on there or not, because we were just crazy busy at the time. I'm like, I don't, I don't really know that I want to do that. You know, do we really need to do that? And she just looked at me like, what is wrong with you? So anyway, <laughs> we, uh, uh, we talked, me, Ron and Kelly, and decided we wanted to, to pursue that. And we were fortunate enough to uh, be chosen as a product to present on the show and to pitch. Um, unfortunately, Ron and Kelly couldn't couldn't join us for the filming because of COVID protocol. And and we yeah. just had business to run back home. So I was I was the lucky one that got to go. But it was a great experience. I mean, I, I have uh, nothing but but wonderful things to say about how they produce the show, the people I worked with uh, prior leading up to the show, uh, the onstage experience. And, um, you know, it was, it's just a top-notch 
um, experience for sure. Nice. Yeah. What have you re-aired since your original airing? Yeah, I, I don't know how many times. I, I really don't. Yeah. Um, probably at least two or three times, I would say. You just never know. And, you know, they're always rerunning those on CBS. Yeah. So, yeah. And do you consistently, like, well, A, the first episode and then the re-airings, did you see a big old spike uh, in sales from that time? Yeah, it was... Uh, yeah, it was substantial. It was, of course, nothing like what COVID had done for us because by the time yeah. Shark Tank aired, that was the next year. Um, so it was aired in 2021 and we filmed it in 2020. And, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I mean, and I know the two times, the one re airing we knew about when it re aired a second time, and, and we did see an increase in sales again. Uh, obviously, the first time we aired, we had. The, probably for three or four weeks, we had substantial uh, increase in sales for that period of time. And then it tailed off. And it seems like our website traffic has stayed a little higher, you know, since we, we were on the show. But yeah, so it's all that, certainly all good. the SEO from the Shark Tank bloggers, I assume. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, for sure. And um, yeah, I highly recommend it. If anybody gets a chance to go on there, it's, it's pretty cool. So once in a lifetime deal, never dreamed in 2007 when we were literally whittling these things, not whittling, but we were making the stepping poles, you know, <laughs> in, in a garage on a chop saw ourselves mm -hmm. and uh, never dreamed that it would turn into what it, what it did. So. Yeah. So what's uh, between you and your partners, what, what's the end goal is to one day sell it. Or are you hoping to hand it down to someone or just one day dissolve it? Like what, what's the end goal for you? Cause it's always a very interesting question. Cause some people don't even think that far ahead. Sure. Um, you know, for now, we're, we're happy to run the business and, and uh, draw a salary off of it and, you know, look for additional opportunities to continue to grow it or, or at least maintain what we have. Um, yeah, it, you know, if somebody came along and wanted to buy it, that's not out of the question. Um, I don't know that we would get out of it what we would want to walk away from it because it's our baby. So, you know, our number probably wouldn't match up with what somebody else's number would be. So for that reason, yeah. I don't think we would end up selling it, but uh, yeah, I mean, for the right price, you know, it, it could be sold. You'd mentioned uh, obviously, so step and pulls a DBA of uh, it, it's KRM innovations, correct? Right. So is it between you and your partners, are there multiple products outside of step and pull that you essentially have multiple brands for, or what's, what's the whole kind of structure for that company? No, that's, that's it. I mean, KRM Innovations is what we started in 2007 to start promoting marketing, manufacturing, step and pull. So that's, again, yeah. that's the flagship. That's, that's the one, the one product that we, uh, we brought all the way from 2007 until now. Nice. Yeah. What is your personal motivation for like continuing, you know, this process and, you know, getting up every day and working on step and pull and, and keep going. I, I always find that that answer is always very different for almost everyone I've asked it for. So it's always a very interesting concept that I'm, I just, I'm interested in what your thoughts are behind that. Well, you know, there's, there is a lot of, I'm not a prideful person, but there's a lot of, you know, I'm proud of step and pull. I'm, and, and my two partners, Ron and Kelly would say the same thing. And I mentioned a few times that we've been blessed to, to be involved with this product. Really just, you know, there's a little bit of luck. There's a lot of hard work that went into it, but um, it, it's, it's really nice to have the freedom to, you know, there's, there's being an entrepreneur is the hardest thing that you can ever do in the business world. There's other things outside of life besides business, but um, you know, whereas if you work in a, like, in a corporate setting, they already have everything figured out. You just plug in and you do your part, little or big, whatever that part is. When you're an entrepreneur, though, it's just, it's wide open. So you get to make that choice. And as, as exciting as that is, that's also daunting. But it's it's challenging. And that's that's what I like. I, I, I like the pride factor of having a product that we we uh, invented ourselves and has, has done what it has done, but then also the, the promise of the future and what what else around is around the corner, you know, who knows? So yeah. we just keep hammering away every day. Nice. Mike, 
Super appreciative. Thank you so much for being on the show. I'd love to give you uh, another minute here and just let everyone know where they can find out more about yourself and or Steppenpole. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, best place is to go to our website and that's steppenpole.com, S-T-E-P-N-P-U-L-L.com. And we have uh, a lot of information, not only purchasing, but uh, we have some blogs on there and about us. And we also have, you can like or follow us on Facebook, Insta, Twitter. So I invite you to do that as well. Perfect. Mike, really appreciate having you on the show. Everyone who tuned in, obviously, thank you so much as well. Please make sure you head over to whichever podcast platform you prefer, rate, review, and subscribe us on there or on YouTube or on ecomshow.com or whatever you prefer. But as usual, thank you so much for joining and we will see you all next time. How are we going? Thank you for tuning in to the Ecom Show. Head over to ecomshow.com to subscribe on your favorite podcast platform or on the Blue Tusker YouTube channel. The Ecom Show is brought to you by Blue Tusker, a full service digital marketing company specifically for e commerce sellers looking to accelerate their growth. Go to bluetusker.com now for more information. Make sure to tune in next week for another amazing episode of the Ecom Show.